What's up, besties? It's your girl Morgan here, and you're listening to Your Internet Best Friend. What is up, besties? I am so excited. Today, we're going to have some girl talk. We're going to shoot the shit. We're going to go over all the Sunday secrets I have promised. And joining me in my living room, she is so freaking funny. I consider her like the queen of Nashville. I discovered her on TikTok before I ever moved to Nashville. She's authentically herself. Probably one of the most confident people I've ever met. She's vaping on my couch right I now. I had to ask permission first. I was like, <laughs> she from- she did ask permission. She's got a Topo Chico seltzer. I, I, we got to pop the champagne. It's in my fridge right now. But joining me on the podcast, your internet best friend with me today is Demps, but Katie Dempsey, but we call her Demps here. What's Welcome. up, baby? Thank you what? for having me. I'm so excited. And I did ask permission. I, I like to ask permission before I walk in people's homes and be like, can I vape in here? I was like, honestly, fine. I have asthma, but like, I don't think it's affecting me. <laughs> you don't me. have asthma? Oh my God. I'm going to blow this way. I'll blow this way. I promise. Oh my God. Um, I'm so excited to have you I'm here. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Oh my God. Well, for those who know nothing about you, which like I know a little bit. Let me take off my sunglasses you know, so you guys see You it. looked real cool. You looked really cool cool though <laughs> I like I always that's one thing about me even in the daytime nighttime I'm always wearing my shades like so I can people watch yeah. and they don't know that I'm looking at exactly them. I'll just be off in the corner just you don't know who I'm looking at yeah they don't need to know no, they, they don't need don't to know need. all right so for those who are like who the hell is Dumps? Give me like a 60 second Cliff Notes version of who you are. Cliff Notes. I haven't heard that and since I <laughs> yeah. college. I like what college. you're doing in Nashville. How in the hell? Like you're huge on TikTok. Like I love your TikToks. We filmed a TikTok before this and she did it in like 10 seconds. And this this would have taken me 10 hours. So like clearly you're doing something right. Who the hell are you? Uh, yeah, my name's Demps. I live here in Nashville, Tennessee. And honestly, how I got here, I don't fucking know. People <laughs> keep booking me for shit. And I'm like, what? How did I get here? Like, well, you guys keep messing up. But hey, I keep I'm still living thriving. Um, honestly, the whole TikTok, it was never a dream of mine to be a TikTok star. I was just doing it to avoid a, like a fillness because I was going through a really shitty fucking breakup. Mm-hmm. And I just found a way to making videos filled me, you know, putting on a cute outfit, slapping a country song on the back of it, dancing down my sidewalk, shotgunning a beer. <laughs> and before you know it, fucking just start growing and growing and growing and then quit my job at Dell Technologies. No way. Yeah, I put it, I put it, first off, I don't even know how I fucking landed that job because I have no, I dropped out of college. Okay. And I was working at Dell Technologies. I don't know. What were you doing at Dell? (laughs) Selling selling software to corporations. Let me just tell you, as you're on my couch in sequin shorts and boots, in a seltzer, in a in a feather crop top. I cannot picture you selling <laughs> Dell software. I, I was behind the phone, baby. It's a smile <laughs> through the phone. Okay, I mean, it's honestly, customer you, service. You could probably sell me on some. So- I don't even need Dell software, but I'm like, if Dumps is selling it, I'm buying it. No, so like that's pretty much how it started. Just shotgunning beers in my driveway and like um, my little cute country home and. Now I'm fucking here promoting country music in Nashville, Tennessee. There you go. Because what? You have your own podcast now. I do. Called Hooch. Okay. Hooch. Hooch.com. Hooch Country. So you mm-hmm. do that. And that's mainly what? Interviewing country new artists? New country artists that are coming into Nashville. New, like, just country mainstream music. You know, top, you know, what's going on in the country world. Because Nashville, it's like its own, like little world right there's so national its own country it, it is wild and i didn't understand it until i moved here one everyone knows everyone tell me tell me how everyone has somehow dated everyone yeah and it really is it's its own different little world from like the rest of america i, I love it saying this. dating in nashville sucks <laughs> girl <laughs> girl no, but that's pretty much how it started. My resume is pretty impressive. I mean, we could sit here all day. Uh, what is the coolest thing that you've done since th- quitting your job, doing the social media thing, becoming like this TikTok star? What was like the number one thing? You're like, damn, that was really cool. It's like a part two. Like okay, two. okay, um, hit me with it. Being featured in one of the biggest top country songs that was just this past year, Whiskey on You with my boy Nate Smith. Wait, that got shut nominated up. a breakthrough artist, breakthrough okay. country music video of the year. And then me hosting on the red carpet at the CMT Music Awards. 
I was like, what is, and I got to interview all my friends, like Jelly Roll, like Chase Matthews, like Priscilla, like all my friends were there. So I, they made me feel at home. Like I was so fucking nervous and sober as hell on the red <laughs> carpet. And meanwhile, like I vape, right? So imagine me hitting my vape on the red carpet. I was like, y'all ain't going to stop me, okay? I'm sober <laughs> She's hell. over here in the corner, yeah, like, like, a little puff. I can't get a glass of champagne or nothing while doing this. Like, what? So I'm going to hit my vape on the red carpet. But, um, yeah, being in the country music, because uh, I love making videos, obviously. Yeah. So being in a country music video, an actual country music video, and hosting on the red carpet, it was just like, what the fuck is my life? Right. It, literally, you almost in this kind of the same for me. I'm from small town, Texas. Grew up, what, one one grocery store, a movie theater. Piggly and Wiggly? No, we had a Walmart. We did, oh. have, a, we did have, we're a, li- a little bit bigger Not than that. Not that country, but <laughs> okay. We, we had a Walmart, but now it's like, I look at what I'm doing. I even like this podcast and having you sit here, I'm like, what? Oh. What is my life? But, and I think for you and me too, I think when you're authentically yourself, and you show up on the internet and you're able to do that one. That's how you grow. That's how you find success. And for a question I get all the time is people are like, how are you so confident? How, how do you show up and not give a shit what people think? Which I mean, sometimes I, I care a little bit, but now I've gotten to the point where this is me. Pink sparkles. Everything. <laughs> take it or leave it, bitch. Ta- <laughs> yeah. Take it or leave it for you. And for those listening who want to know, how do you just authentically be yourself? Like, have you always been like this or did it hit no. a moment where you were like, no, when did you kind of just stop caring? Um, I think after raising a kid on my own mm-hmm. and I went through a lot of trauma and balance, you know, figuring out my life. Like nobody knew who I was. You know, yeah. I moved back home from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know, um, domestic violence and all that. You know, a couple years go on, you know, I had my struggles to mm-hmm. trust. So, you know, even with like all this success that I've had and all of that, I will never forget where my roots are what yeah. I went through stay humble and be kind you know on the days that I bitch you know about my life now I'm like girl it could be a whole lot worse okay what I went through but I think was like uh, being beaten down so bad mm-hmm. um we went we're talking domestic violence like yeah. we could get really serious but I'm not really trying to go that deep you know <laughs> like I've talked about this like people know but I think it's just overcoming and just finding that empowerment you know raising a kid on my own you know just like well i i do everything on my own i am a woman i've I've done this and i'm gonna fucking do it and if you don't like it then i'm sorry i hate to say it kiss my ass yeah (laughs) kiss it no because are you paying my bills no you're fucking not well and that's that's the biggest thing too on social media it's when people get upset are you paying my bills that's what i always think of they're kind of paying your bills if they're doing your shit that is true But for those who have something to say and they're like, well, I don't like this. I don't like that. It's like, well, look, we're all just trying to make a living. Like, I'm just trying to show up and be myself. And for anyone wanting to start a career on social media, that's what I always say is you got to have thick ass skin. You have to have thick skin. Everybody has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion as well. But guess what? Because everyone does have an opinion, wouldn't you rather just do what you want to do? Because if you're trying to be someone else, well, they're still not going to like that. Mm -mm. So you might as well show up authentically as yourself. Just be you, baby. Oh my God. Just be fucking you. If you want to wear that outrageous outfit, go wear that outrageous outfit. If you want to look like an Adam Sandler on Broadway, Fucking go be at Adam Sandler on fucking Broadway. Like, go enjoy life. We only, I I can't stress this enough. We only live once. Like, you're not going to get anywhere in life by listening to other people's opinions and everything. I didn't, surely didn't get this far by listening to anybody's opinions. Mm -hmm. I remember, like, you know, getting into this field and one guy told one of my other friends, like, oh, she needs media training. And that friend of mine was like, the fuck she does? She doesn't need any media training. She, she, we don't want to change her at all. We well, want to keep her the way she is. That's what's crazy. So when I, when I first moved to LA, I was trying to do reporting and I had a Texas accent. I can see you being a news reporter. <laughs> that, that, that was the goal. And then Go I mean, give me something, be like on today's forecast. <laughs> Today, this is um, Morgan Willett reporting for KXAN News. <laughs> see, you know, that, that was going to be my career <laughs> I path. I can see you being a news reporter. Um, I, which I'm like, thank God, because. 
look, I news reporters, they deserve raises. They make yeah, they no money. And it's such a hard field. That's I'm, a field I know nothing about. I, I am very thankful my life took a little 180 and I'm sitting on a couch doing a podcast instead. But when I first moved to L.A., they're like, you got to cut the accent like you. And I really I had to work <laughs> on cutting my accent. And you're, now I'm like, I kind of want my accent back. I kind of miss that accent. You're looking at somebody you can spot out in a fucking crowd when I open up my mouth. <laughs> but that's what makes you you. And I feel like that's what makes you stand out. And also, I feel like when you're interviewing people, it makes them more comfortable yeah. rather than like a prim, like polished, like news reporter anchor. It's like, no, you just want to be yourself. And like yeah, that's like just, how people open up more. So I'm like, more power out. to you. Um, what, what's the crazy, this is, we're taking a little turn. What's the craziest thing that's like happened to you on Broadway? Speaking of, we mentioned Broadway. God bless it. What has not happened to me on Broadway? You uh, know, as a local now, I try not to go on Broadway and I feel bad because, you know, I want to meet my friends, my internet besties, all like all of them. Yeah. They're like, damn, I'm in Nashville. Come meet me on Broadway. And like, there's a point where it's like, God damn, I can't go to Broadway. I, I can't go to fucking <laughs> Broadway. I just, I literally... I try to stay away from fucking Broadway, honestly, in the past year. You know, I've done the whole thing. Uh, you know, just God bless it. I just feel like you can't go to Broadway and ever have a casual time. Fuck no, you can't. You can't. One lemon drop turns into fucking 10 and then you're fucking 2 o'clock in the morning. Nothing good comes from Broadway after 12 a.m. Like, nothing. Nothing good comes from Broadway after, like, 9 p.m. I'll tell you what. When that sun goes down, you better take that ass home. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I always say. Well, but that's the issue is I'll go and I'll be like, I'm, I'm love a day drinking moment. Love, like, a rooftop. Let's go to Broadway. I also live two blocks so you're from the, Broadway. you're like me. I'm becoming like this. Like you like like to do 3 a.m. shit at 12 p.m. Yes. Yes. That is me. Yes. Where I'm home in my bed by 8 p.m. with a mask on watching yep. some criminal movie yep. or something. I, want, I want my blue mask on. I want ambient noise. I want a cold room. By 9 p.m. I want to be drinking water in my bed. But I want to go out and have I want to go hard during the day. But I want to be in bed. But the issue with Broadway is it doesn't that never happens. I think so. So I, like networking here in Nashville um, I've had to turn down. I had to stop saying no to a lot of things. But no, go back to your question. I don't think I have a crazy story. You could just go on TikTok. I mean, you could just see it. Um, <laughs> me pouring beer on some girl's titties at Kid Rock. Did, did you know her? Uh, I want to say we're Insta besties. Okay. Okay. Insta so you, it wasn't just like a random girl you, Insta, you went up we're, and. We're Insta friends and all that. But I think that's just like. I don't know. I don't really have a crazy Broadway story. I'm just fucking wild in itself, girl. Well, Any days a wild. Wait, day. wait. But speaking, speaking of wild and Broadway, you said before this podcast you met a cute guy on Broadway. Yeah. If you guys don't know, I did a whole ass interview outside Bridgestone Arena this morning at, at 8 a.m. She texted me. She goes, "Do you want some coffee?" I said, "Girl, I've been up since six. I'm I already had my coffee. Okay. Like, I'll take my Topo Chico seltzer I, though. I walked in with my vape and my toka. What is it called? Topo Chico. It's like the fancier white claw. I had no I idea. I actually do like those. I do like the Topo. I hate a white claw. Hate white claws. I had no idea. I thought that was the cheaper shit. No, so, I think that's actually better for so, you. Anyway, so this you. morning, yeah, I did a whole PBRs in town. Uh, professional bull riding so yeah. it's an exciting event uh, right now here in nashville but of course i had to take a minute to come over and see my girl and do this uh but yeah this morning after i did that whole little session i walked into this bar and this guy me and him just locked eyes he's the bartender I was like, damn. And of course, I look at the hands. I'm making sure he's not married first. Of oh, course. I thought you meant I'm like, hey, because, you know, my one of my biggest if a man, has, <laughs> if a man has dainty hands. Oh, I thought you're talking about big hands or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, have you ever this will give me the biggest if ick, if a man has petite little like soft hands. I don't want no I don't want soft baby hands. I need a callus. I need a callus. New fear unlocked. Okay. Babes, but okay, but I'm happy he wasn't wearing a ring new, and didn't new, have new fear unlocked. I'm gonna start looking at men's hands. Yeah, if now. they're soft and oh, tiny, it's weird. Can't talk to you. You got tiny hands. You got you got tiny little baby hands. But anyways, okay, this man had no ring and large hands. Yeah, we were hitting it off. He just looked at me, he goes, Who the hell are you? And I was like, I said my name. I was like, damn. He was like, I'm sorry, what? I was like, damn. So, uh, and I'm scared to like give him my socials. He hasn't asked that. I mean, you got the main contact already. You got my phone number. So right. you don't need to see the socials. 
Well, when a guy asks you for your Instagram, because this is one of my biggest struggles, obviously, when you have more of a following. And look, we show up on social media not caring. Uh, every other, I feel like girls in this dating world, like if you're not an influencer, you just post like a pretty picture every now and then. But like, we've got, we got, we got reels. You have to open up. You have to be vulnerable. Someone can go on our social media and find out so much information about us. You can look at my story at any time and figure out what I'm feeling. Maybe I'm crying on my story. I'm talking about whatever the hell is happening. My therapist, all this. Men should not know this much about me. I feel like that's where me and you are different. I had to cut a boundary. Really? Of like opening up to the internet. Yeah, because people will hold that ag- ag- like against you. And I wish I could be more open to the internet of what the hell I've gone through. Because, you right. know, with all this success and all that, girl, you get some fucking stalkers and haters to haters, the point where yeah. they're trying to ruin your fucking life. Yeah, it was. It's such it's and a I'll fine have, line. Maybe of, I won't share it with you on camera. Maybe one of these days. I'll open it up about it yeah. but it like I can't go on the internet and say I'm having a fucking breakdown I, you know sometimes I will but you know because I like to, a lot of my following is single mamas right and I like to show them you know hey it's okay to have a fucking breakdown it's normal but I have to cut that boundary of when I can share it and okay. all that if I feel like it's okay to share it, I'll share it but yeah I had to cut that boundary right there <laughs> well so for you like trolls like do you think you you get more hate messages than no I get more messages of how my story inspired them yeah and it's a it's a lot of pressure I'm not gonna lie because I want to help any single mama Mm -hmm. I can you know just go do the dance easy said than done right right easy said than done like nobody can walk in your shoes and nobody's walked in my shoes and I'm gonna tell you right now it was not easy getting here where I'm at right now with you sitting right here with you Uh, I've been through some shit hell and back that's for fucking sure but I I get more love than hate Um, I think this past year you know when people see you up at the top they just want to bring you down obviously but when I'm talking about stalkers they're full on fucking stalkers, like calling places that you actually go to. Oh, see, I've never dealt with oh, this. Oh, it's something I wish nobody should fucking deal with. Like, they see you at somewhere and they're emailing and calling that what? place while you're fucking there. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's it's actually. Have you had to file restraining orders? There's things happening in place. Shut up. I, I, see, I, okay, that's so different for me. I don't know if it's because I have a reality TV background. I honestly don't know, but. No, I've never had but a you have to understand situation. I came from nothing and went to this whole so it's almost like just jealousy honestly interesting and if you want it that bad baby if you want to do that go do it right go put yourself out there but it, it got I'm not gonna lie to you this past year was mentally mentally one of the most exhausting years of my life but you would never know it because you know what my output is hmm. I'll go make a video I'll go slap a song on and make like a recreate music video. Yeah. How I'm feeling. And that, see, and that's, that's, that's like my what output. I feel like people don't realize is it, it is a create creative outlet. Like I, people think I'm nuts. I love, I love, I'm more of an Instagram girly, but. And like, I'm a TikTok girly. Like we got to, we got to swap because like I suck at TikTok. But like for me, creating content is fun. It's, it's an outlet. It's a release. It's something I enjoy doing. But I feel like people look and they're like, oh, my God, she's just a, a dumb girl. Like yesterday I posted like a Taylor Swift try on haul video of some oh, sort. Oh, I saw it. I liked it. So, I was like, and okay. I'm like, I thought it was so cute. But then I'm sure some people are like, this bitch is so annoying. Like, But they don't know what's going on behind no, scenes. No, and that's that's my biggest thing is like you can't judge via social media. No. For some people, that it might be ha- what makes them happy. It is Posting a creative whatever outlet. They, whatever they want. So you can't judge. And also like the people posting everything, they're making – they're making money off of it. Sometimes so. I'm having a manic episode and I'll post 10, 10 TikToks. Because I have two TikToks. I have one that's like over a million and then one that's half a million. And I'm like just managing both of them. It's like, fine, where's Waldo? Where's Dimps? Where did she post that? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have a TikTok lesson because... <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, we, I, no, I was trying to explain this to her. I was like, content is anything. Um, yeah, wait, how did you say, you said the Google analogy that I was like, oh, damn, look like, at so TikTok as your new Google. So if you have a life hack or want to show something, it's TikTok. People are not going to just go to Google. I mean, maybe, you know, you got your older age group. Yeah. But nowadays, our generation, because it's evolving so much social media and all that, people are going straight to TikTok. They type in on the search Which engine. Which is so true. Pasta. You got fucking billions of pasta videos. 
Which is so true. I'm going to Europe in a couple weeks, and instead of going to Google to be like, you're on fucking TikTok. You're on I was, Europe. I TikTok. literally opened up oh TikTok, and I was like, where, where to go in France? And that's where I found all of my information. Look at TikTok as your new Google uh, life hacks, like you know, with clothes, like you know, comedy. I'm more of a comedy person on the internet. I love to post comedy yeah. skits about being a single mama, you know, trying to get my kid to school, which is real life events, by the way. And when it's that's rela- not it's active, re- it's <laughs> relatable too. Oh my god with the coffee and vape in my hands get your ass in the car we're gonna be late Um. but I feel like for for single moms out there and I don't know I don't have a kid we are not ready for that yet I can barely take care of myself but I'm sure they like that more because it's it's relatable versus like seeing the the perfect put together like mom everything (laughs) is everything is great and it's like that ain't real life like I can only imagine what it's like having a kid I'm not a part and you know I try to tell my followers this I am not fucking perfect and when people say you're my idol I like cringe back I don't want to be idolized I just want to help you succeed in life yeah just be who you want to be because you only live once you only live once I just don't want to be idolized or anything like that I just want to let people know like just be your fucking self. Who gives a flying fuck? Because if you want to make that video in the middle of Walmart, guess what? Chances are those people in Walmart shopping, they're never going to see you again. They Ever. might see your video, but the, the chances of y'all running into each other. Hey, I saw you make that video in, you know, Walmart, you know, like they're not going to yeah. remember. So just be yourself. Yep. Be yourself. Y- when I always, this is a, we're going to take a morbid turn, but I'm always, I always say, are you if, gonna pop that bottle of champagne if we're gonna take a more yeah. turn? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I know. I'm like, we can go get it. Yeah, go get it. Okay, go okay. get it. Okay. And we're back. You have to pop it. <laughs> On this nice ass rug. Well, is it gonna explode everywhere? It is too fucking fancy in here. I have a kid and five I don't animals pop at it. home. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Here you go. Um, while you pop this, I was gonna <laughs> my morbid thought was I always say if your life ends tomorrow, which it's not guaranteed. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Where the fuck did that go? <laughs> Where the fuck did that go? <laughs> did that hit any of the cameras? No. <laughs> I know you are fucking lying. I'm just thinking if it would have. And you want to talk about TikTok content? There it is, bitch. <laughs> I'm just thinking if that would have came down on your head, I feel like it would have killed you. How much pressure was in that? <laughs> I don't know. I've actually, I have been saving that. I just, it, Ladies and gentlemen, she pulled this on the top of her fridge. <laughs> <laughs> that bottle of champagne has gone through a move from LA to Nashville. It's, oh. it's been pressurized. Oh my gosh. we I'm dead. Um, but speaking Damn, of if, if our life was going to end tomorrow, which our life almost just ended right now via a champagne, um, <laughs> you might as well. Yeah. Literally, like, this could be our last moment. You might as well freaking enjoy it because you don't know when life's going to end. Oh, my God. I'm dead. Well, cheers to living your best life and living authentically for yourself and yes. not caring what anyone yes. else has to say. Yes. Cheers, darling. So I turned 30 this weekend and, like, my mom's like, what the, f- what the hell do you want to do for your 30th? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. When, I don't when, know. when is your birthday? Sunday. In two days. I turned 30. <laughs> are you excited or are you nervous? Honestly, I feel nothing. Really? I've, That's the I've, best way to be. I feel nothing. I've, li- you know, I'll, I've just gone through so much shit in my life. I feel fucking nothing. Like, mm. I mean, I know 30 is a big deal. But I feel like 30s are about to be the fucking prime of my damn life because 29 was such a wild fucking ride. And, you know, now I'm financially stable. Mm -hmm. Um, I I mean, it's just wild. You know, I'm not worrying about, you know, how the hell am I going to pay for after school care? How the hell am I going to pay rent? You know, it's just wild to me how the end of my 20s, like my 20s were such a fucking shit show raising a kid on my own. I did not have a 20s. Like I wasn't Mm -hmm. out partying, drinking. I was literally hustling, doing any type of job. Like I was a fucking bail bondsman at one point. 
Do you know what a bail bondsman is? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know the details. Baby, I was it. bailing people out of jail. When they needed out of jail, I was behind that fucking glass, like, signing paperwork, getting them out. Like, I need two You're grand doing to get you out. I'm doing, doing the Lord's work. I'm doing the Lord's work for the like, people. So I feel like 30s are just about to be even more crazier. And I pray to God every night, like, you know, to stay, you know, to help me still be on this path. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, like I said, stay humble and be kind. Don't forget where you came from. Well, and also it's a mindset. I feel like when I turned 29, I had a panic attack. It's my last year. My, it's, it's, it's why I started this podcast. Honestly, <laughs> I was like, I'm having a panic attack. I was like, I don't know podcast. what to do. It's my, in my last year, my twenties, I'm single. I, I'm from Texas. All my friends are married. All I thought I was going to be. Is everything bigger in Texas? What, sure is. I thought I was going to be in a white picket fence with a house and babies and I'm 29. And I was like, you know what I need to do? I need to start a podcast. I need to document my the last year of my 20s. And I had a freak out moment. And then my mindset shifted. And I'm like, if you think it's going to get better, it really will only get better. You just have to be in that mindset. Yeah. Whereas I feel like a lot of 29 year olds are like, I'm turning 30 and it, it gets worse. And my, my fun, wild years are over. And it's like. No, it really, if you want it to get better, it only gets better. I think that's believe how it. I wake up each morning. Like, how is my day going to play out? Because, you know, it could be a rough morning fighting with my daughter about the damn shoes she's going to be wearing. Like, you know, I'm having a breakdown. I'm fighting with a mini me. I'm it's like looking in the damn mirror. You know, I'm fighting with myself. You know, I have to look at myself like the day you're going to have is how you fucking make it. So if you mm. are going to be miserable be fucking miserable lay in the bed it's just how your day's gonna plan out but if you look at yourself in the mirror and be like you know what fuck this i'm gonna have a great day mm-hmm. i'm gonna go do something today you know even if it's something out of your comfort zone you know going into the movies by yourself going to the farmer's market by yourself yeah. hell even taking yourself out to lunch like go make it a good day it's all mm-hmm. like you said like a mindset mindset, mindset shift oh. i'm the number one person of taking myself on a date that's for sure i love it's taking ga- myself on a date it's game changing mm-hmm. i feel like for especially for single girls it's the most empowering thing that you can do yeah. it's like you don't need a guy to take you to dinner you don't need a guy to pay for it go where you want to go wear what you want to wear don't worry about forcing conversation with some crusty guy that you probably are and not going to talk I'm still to single is because they're so fucking intimidated by me <laughs> that I mean I feel like you're actually more of an intimidating presence than I am but like I feel the same way about myself sometimes I'm like well I feel like they'd look at me and they're like Ooh, they're but you know what I always <laughs> say because a lot of times people tell me that I'm too much but my thing is if you're I'm too, too much, much go find less go find less go it's find like less. Taylor Swift um I'll write a song about you I'll do a TikTok about you <laughs> There you go. I'm kidding. I usually don't put like my dirty laundry, you know, on the internet. I've learned the very hard way about dating. Yeah, so that. when it comes to dating, you like your dating I'll, zone, when are you going to post about them? What's I'll, like your rule of thumb? I'll fuck with the internet. You know, I have really good people in my life at the moment, like really good people who I love and care about. But if it ever got serious, I don't think I would tell the internet. Yeah. I don't think I would go deep oh I, we're dating no, i wouldn't yeah it's just best you know to just keep it rolling keep how it is private. and keep there's a boundary you have to set from the internet um you know keeping some things very private yeah. in your life even about my kid i don't post my kid a lot anymore and people just think i'm an awful mother because i don't post her every day and i'm like, like that's you're your fucking weirdo like you're so fucking weird you're so fucking weird i promise you she's taken care of <laughs> but it and you really do have to have boundaries on the internet and that's my biggest struggle especially because the people that watch my stuff essentially do pay my bills like that that is my income and i'm so right. thankful but i often feel like i owe them so much and you it's don't like, I really don't. Shit. I really don't. And my my thing is especially dating because I went through a, a breakup on the Internet. People followed it, et cetera. Like that was That's the worst fucking thing is going through a breakup on the Internet. On the internet. And, and now my biggest fear is like I want to let people in, but I also don't because I don't want to ever go through that again. So it's like the fine line of when you find someone, are, am I going to tell them? Am I not? Obviously, I want to post like with the person I'm interested in, but, you but don't also fuck with the internet. You don't have to. Yeah, that's true. Keep I, it, you you post like a subtle like hand. Hand, you know? girl, you can do what I do. You could turn them around and have them dance and fuck with the internet. <laughs> Maybe oh, we're on to something. Just do Maybe what I do. We're on to something. And just have them guessing. <laughs> just have them guessing. Never show the face, but but show the backside. W W D D. What would Dumps do? <laughs> there you go. What would Dumps do? I cannot. I cannot. But no, uh, when it comes to my love life, I try to keep it um, very private. Um, even on days that like, you know, we're 
probably going through something. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say I'm taken, but I wouldn't say I'm single. Like I'm single, but I'm not taken. Does that make sense? Yes. Wait. No. I, I feel like it's so fucking you're, weird. I am. You're such, with someone, but it's not serious is what you're saying. It's not serious, but we love each other. OK. Does that make sense? Yeah. We just want the best for each other. And he knows that like I'm off doing my thing. I have this whole lifestyle Mm -hmm. you know and he's trying to figure out his life and get some things together but there was like a spur of the moment where I was talking to another guy but that was just fucking toxic Mm. but even before I had my kid I rekindled a friendship with this guy I had a one night stand in Nashville and I rekindled Mm. my friendship with him and I just came to the conclusion like this is probably not gonna work out and this is just recently too oh Um, yeah recently and I was like you know what I haven't talked to him in a couple weeks either and the other guy my the other person (laughs) knows about this too so we're very open see the kind of relationship we have I was like listen I was talking to this other guy while we were taking you know a break or whatever we were very open but that's the best thing I think as long as you're open and communicating and look the timing of everything it, don't that's, rush it. You, oh, I needed to hear that one. Don't rush it, baby. Don't rush it. What did Miley Cyrus say? Don't rush for fucking anybody. Mother Nature never rushes for anybody. She's always on time. Oh, I like that. I am oh. not a Swifty. I'm a Cyrus girl. Miley. Okay, look, I love Taylor Swift. I'm going to go to the concerts, all the fun things. Miley, though, can sing. Not saying Taylor can't sing. I I'm think her vocals a, have matured. But my, Miley Cyrus is wildly Miley talented. Cyrus is like my alter ego like we just don't give a fuck I actually shaved my head during when she <laughs> I'll show you pictures wait what I actually had the whole bleach blonde shaved my head um before I was pregnant had the faded lines and everything Sh- I want a photo it was an era it was a fucking era hold on I think it's in my wait, archives on I'm my eyes for a split second I was like should I shave my head we should we Listen, should never. Here's the thing. I always I always tell myself, I'm like, God, do I do that again? Do I do Dems, I- if anyone can pull off a shaved head, I feel like it's you. How do I now, go to my I had archive shave- photos on my IG? You're the IG girly. I got, I got you. How do I, I go to the you. archives? I never check my IG too, by the way. That is really? one thing. You're more on TikTok. I don't even check those DMs either. I mean the more power to you. Like, you know how much time I spend in my DMs responding I to I wish people? I could be like that, but I'm so damn exhausted okay. by the end of the day raising a kid with getting to you school. You have a valid excuse. I'm just so fucking tired by the end of the day. Oh, yeah. Shut. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, yeah. I came in like a wrecking ball. Bring the- Bring back. I thought about it so many fucking times. I almost had like a Britney Spears moment a couple of weeks ago. Look, I ago. support you. I Because I can never do this, so I'm going to support Hold you on, doing let me it. show you. An, I'm going to support you doing it. Like, it was like a whole cute look, dude. Oh, you. That is cute. Okay, you, you actually pulled that off very, very well. I felt. And, but I think the father of my child at the time, he made me feel so fucking insecure. Like, I remember, like, an intimate um, night we were trying to have. He pushed me off. He was <gasps> like, get the fuck off of me. You look like a boy. <gasps> and, like, that still eats me till mm. now, you know, with insecurities. Yep. You know, just toxic. You know, I felt so sexy with my short hair. I rocked it. But, man, he made me feel like... And I think that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's something I feel like every girl out there should pay attention to. Like if you like it and it makes you feel sexy and some guy is making you question that, you need to leave that. My. You need to leave that situation immediately. So going back to confidence, like, you know, I've been through all that. So it's almost like I grew over mm-hmm. time. Like, bitch, if you don't like me, then bye. Then, you bye. know, if, if you don't like me, someone else will. Yes. Yeah. Someone else will. Uh, There's been plenty of their other ones. I'm just <laughs> well, you know what? Pass them my way because they... Pass them. Your Dad, girl, got, dating got, in Nashville sucks. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't do it. <laughs> just don't yeah, fucking no, do I, it. I, I, you know what they tell me? They always say, Dems, I see you ending up with a country artist. I could see that. I support that for you. I don't think I want that. Yeah? No? I... I was no. Uh, I, I mean, I would and I wouldn't. I I feel like I have trust issues from X, Y, and Z reasons. I don't have trust issues, believe it or not, anymore. Okay. I c- overcame that. Good for you. Because I have my own lifestyle. And yeah. And like, you know, I know I'm beautiful in my own way and all of that. 
Um, but it's just more so I don't I just don't see myself as a country artist. Okay. But I see people would tell me all the time, I can see you married to a country artist. I'm like, I don't see that. Never say never. Well, she's gonna be a year later. She's walking down the aisle with the country star. I'm yeah. like, excuse me, I, told you I better be invited to yeah, that wedding. Yeah, my wedding with a country artist. I'm like, in the background, I'm like, cheers. Told you, bitch. <laughs> cheers to that. Um, okay, well, let's do some Sunday secrets. So I don't know. You're not an Instagram girl, so you probably haven't seen this. So. On Sundays, I ask my people, I'm like, spill the tea That's to me. That's the Lord's Day. It is the Lord's Day, but I tell like me. I like to go MIA on the Lord's Day. Tell me your deepest dark. I know. I love going to church, but then it's weird because no, I'm like. No, girl, when I say MIA, I mean no phone, no nothing, watching rom-coms <laughs> in my that's, bed. That's what, that's what I feel like I should be doing. Instead, I'm like. Hey, random internet humans, tell me your deepest, darkest secrets and let me share them on the internet. So I made a list. Okay, go ahead. And we're going to judge the hell out of these people okay. and their secrets. I hate judging people, but. But like it's anonymous. I actually, I have no idea. Okay. Who I I'm have, not a judgy person, but. I have but no idea okay. who these are from, but I'm gonna, we're going to give you our honest opinions on your secrets. Maybe give you some, maybe not so good advice, but okay. Um, Dems gives advice. Dem Don't take that home, please. <laughs> Oh, okay. I set up my ex-husband with a girl I bought my car from. What the fuck? I need a whole biography of that. <laughs> well, the that's the thing. It's like, I'm like, I need more information on that. Did you, I'm assuming you ended up on good terms with your ex-husband? Yeah, to help buy a car. Did, and set him up. That's they, very kind. Did they have shitty credit and you're <laughs> the one who had the best credit? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, like, well, I need more details on that. But honestly, like, I support, look. We support? I support it. If you and your ex-husband are on good terms, you might as well help him out. You obviously care deeply for them. I mean, I'm thinking about my ex and there's literally no way I would ever put a girl I'm through, never thinking through that. I'm never that. Maybe, maybe I'm never good. thinking about my eggs. <laughs> no, 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 no. OK, um, this person, I work as a teacher and lie about having a boyfriend so I don't have to do clubs after school. Genius. <laughs> support. Genius. Support. And I come from a family of educators. I fucking support because <laughs> I know those mental breakdowns are deep, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you have our blessing. All you all you single teachers out there, you lie. <laughs> You lie about that family, kids. Look, you you spend all day in a classroom with kids. Like with kids, kids. You, don't, you don't need to spend more time after school with more children. Listen, lie. As a lie. single mother, I am grateful for the educational, like what you are doing in life. Okay, you lie. It's all right. <laughs> Karma might get you, but it's okay. Mm. Okay. Um, this person, I caught my boyfriend looking at engagement rings. He doesn't know that I know. That's my biggest fear. I would be pull brides wars. I, I, pull Kate Hudson, go up to him, be like, why won't you marry me? Find the box, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I also am just, I'm such a bad liar that if I found the ring, I I couldn't keep it a secret. Also, if, then if he's going to propose, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be like, I found this in your shoebox. Yeah, just be confront him. Yeah. Be like, dude, I caught, I caught, and this is what I like, by the way. Like, right. Go ahead and educate him first before he buys that damn ring. What would you do if you found the ring and you didn't like the ring? Would you make him take it back? <laughs> is that bad I, I'm I mean here's my thing when it comes to engagement rings men listen up make take your girl with you to the engagement ring store make sure you pick out one she likes don't guess don't do any of that one of my girlfriends um she got engaged and I remember like she wasn't a fan of the ring and she ended up she ended up making him take it back. So I'm just saying. She made him take it back. Save yourself. Yeah. She's like, I want it this. It can't be worse than my baby daddy. I saw the receipt. He told me he bought the engagement ring and then, you know, talked like his fuck. He, well, we got into an argument. He was like, bitch, I took the fucking ring back. I was like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. Did he? Actually, yeah. He, he took got it his back. money back. Well, on, toxic. Yeah, yeah you you that was a blessing in disguise, girlfriend. Oh, you have no idea. Ooh, okay. Speaking of exes, this person, my ex boyfriend, left me on his credit card, and I've been using it since. Support. I don't give a damn. I still use my ex's Netflix. I mean, and Prime, ordering movies and everything. What? What? He fucking knows. I think he knows. I mean, I, what am I? Why? Why are none of my exes offering up anything? I don't give a damn. In my daughter's room. On the Netflix account, it's his. 
I mean, I support that. I would like someone, <laughs> someone give me their Amazon I Prime. I just said that out loud. It's still their my Netflix. Ex. But we're still friends, though. Okay. Like, we love John well, Good that, That's also like he's already paying for it. It's not like you're like shopping on Revolve using his credit card <laughs> on two hundred dollar shirts. It's just a Netflix account called. But Calm also, down. like if if you do have your ex's credit card and y'all didn't in on good terms, you. Honestly, I'd be charging that. And then I, if he asked, I'd be like, it's fraud. Someone probably hacked you. You better sorry. report that, buddy. Uh, but sorry. then again, that's very fucking illegal. I would be like Is that laying illegal, in bed. Yeah, to do fraud on your account. That's a credit card that's not but, yours. That would make me lay in bed at fucking night. Are you kidding me? Karma, but, bitch. <laughs> okay, but. Okay, now I'm thinking this. Yeah, through. karma. I'm thinking, but you know what? I if Say I did that. Say I went on a little shopping spree using my ex's credit card, which I haven't because I don't have access to that, unfortunately. But I would just, if someone asked, I'd be like, oh, sorry, I, it was auto-saved to my computer. I thought it was my credit card. Okay, see, this is documented. So if you ever fucking do that, they can <laughs> FBI know. would come back People fucking back. Know. Yeah, they know. Okay, so no. Um, <laughs> maybe don't do that. But like, I support you, that person. Oh, okay. Okay. My my guy best friend tried to kiss me and won't tell me why. I'm assuming he girl be a straight up and ask him. I'm assuming what are he doing? tried to kiss you because he likes you. Duh. <laughs> also, would you date your best friend? My best friend? Yeah, your guy best friend. I would try it. Really? I would try it. And if the sex is good, then yeah, let's go for it. But if the sex is bad, and then we still have that connection. I still want to be friends with you, obviously. I see. I'm that. such a weirdo. Like, I I either am into you. Oh, my God. Like, I want to date or I want to be friends. There's no in between. Like, I can't oh, cross. we're different. If I'm such a weirdo. If you can make me laugh and smile and we enjoy each other's company. Yeah, but what, what if you catch feelings and he doesn't? That's my... Oh, like, I'm heartbroken. Yeah, see, and I'm like, I'm not willing to put myself through that heartbreak. I'm I'm heartbroken, but I, I you know, I, I lick my wounds and I go on about yeah, my life. I guess, there you go. You know what? You have to put yourself out there and heartbreak is part of life. I keep telling myself that. So I don't know. Maybe ask your guy friend why he wanted to kiss you. Maybe you'll get a good answer. Maybe if you guys end up married, let us know. You're yeah, welcome let us for that know. advice. Ooh, one time my best friend and I had, speaking of your best friend and sleeping with them, my best friend and I had drunk sex while I was bleeding and the tampon was still in. That sounds. Wait, say that <laughs> one. Okay. Where's okay. that champagne at? <laughs> Here, you, say, need to, you need to drink more. Say say that one more One time. time my best friend and I had drunk sex while I was bleeding and the tampon was still in. That just. Honestly, I've done that. And let me tell you something. That is something your gynecologist does not want to endure. It uh, just sounds painful. Honestly, you don't know once it's shoved up there so far. Uh, this actually happened. I, that, in high school, like senior year, I, w that actually happened. Did you have to get it surgically removed? No, I went to the gynecologist and I'm open. I'll be admitted to the story. There was just like a smell, like something leaking, a smell. And I'm young. I'm yeah, 18. Like, what the hell's happening? Yeah, what's wrong with my body? I go to the gynecologist and I shit you not, two nurses and this male gynecologist. Looks like I found the problem. Pulls out the <gasps> tampon that Stop. was sh and like that. I mean, you're lucky you found it. Yeah, because I could have gotten very sick and everything. Toxic shock, whatever. But that's actually happened. I've <gasps> actually I've actually had that happen. You had toxic shock syndrome? No. Oh. I had a tampon <laughs> show oh. sh shoved up in me. Okay, well. Maybe his dick was too small and like I didn't fucking feel it. I mean, it was uh, I was 18, yeah. but damn don't be girl it happens to the best of us don't feel it's fine tell them to bleach your sheets they'll be fine you'll be fine um okay Ooh, i stash money from my husband hell yeah i sneak it and he has no idea hell yeah do I, it i honestly kind of support that i support that just depends on the marriage i'm just speaking because i know somebody okay. in my life like this that has that person has total financial control mm -hmm. and like she has to ask if she can just like go get her nails done or something. Oh, no, Fucking no. had the money. Yeah. Had the also, money. Also, just like, I feel like it should be, again, I don't know your marriage. I don't know the situation, but I feel like it should be 50 50. You know, like, hell yeah, what's it should yours, be 50 50. What, what's yours is mine, babe. You sign up for that. So I support you, sister. Ooh, hubby cheated on me while pregnant. I don't know how to handle it. <gasps> that, that's tough. That, that like stabbed me in the gut. 
that that because I'm a mom at that. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of speechless. Um, what would you say to that? Like, I do you conf- stay or do you leave? I would fucking leave. Yeah. Unless he's going to show up and literally kiss your ass, buy you a new house, new car, get the whole nursery done. Yeah. And all that show up. Other than that, I would fucking leave his ass. Yes, it's going to be hard as a single mom. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is yeah. going to be so fucking hard. Holy fuck that. Ate, I, uh, like, <laughs> that is a jab to my stomach. I mean, I just feel like that. Look, cheating, I don't support in any situation. But for someone to cheat while you're. Your partner pregnant. is pregnant. Oh my God. No, simply, simply cannot. Ooh, here's a good one. Okay. My coworker has a longtime girlfriend and a child, and he is cheating on her. With her? Wait, my coworker. Oh, sorry. My coworker who has a girlfriend and a kid, he's cheating on her. Should I tell the girl? Whoo. That's always tough because it's like, is it your place? Yeah. But like, I would have to. I think I would have to. I couldn't sleep at night. Especially being cheated on. Depends on, on and your like, the friendship with that person, though. Are you guys like besties? Or are you guys ooh. just like coworkers? Do you guys just like get coffee together in the break room? You know what I would do? I'd pull a Snooky and Jay Wow. I'd be right and write an email. Mm-hmm. I'd be and I'd be sliding. Where that. the fuck is it coming from, bitch? Are you gonna make a whole ass email? No, I, you know what I, I think I would type it up. I would print it. Now and today, we're so technology advanced. Right. They could trace that email. Good so, luck to you. That's all I got to say. You know, I'd be, I'd be printing it. I'd be typing it up on Word. I'd be putting it in a blank. Oh, we're not actually digitally sending no, it. No, no, we can't it have out. any tracing. And you're leaving it on her desk so you can ruin her work day? <laughs> no, put it. I'll find her mailbox. <sighs> That's tough. That is tough, though. Honestly, I would, me personally, I'm not a drama person. I would stay out of it. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's not your place. Maybe urge, if you're friends with the guy, urge him. Be like, hey, like. Maybe tell her, like, go to marriage counseling, like, something. I don't know. I think it just depends on your friendship with that person. Right. Like, yeah. if it's my best friend, be like, bitch, your fucking boyfriend's cheating on you. <laughs> yeah, but if it's, a, I guess, a casual coworker, maybe don't ruin their life. I don't know. Mm, stay out of it. Okay. <sighs> we say stay out of it. To an, or write an anonymous letter. I don't know. Whatever you want. Oh, <laughs> okay, last one. My ex cheated on me. So after we broke up, I hooked up with a player from his favorite NFL team. Could I see you, baby? Honestly? <laughs> who the fuck said that? I want to know who said that. Snaps to you. Yeah. Uh, what? I, I said- pity the man <laughs> who messes with a woman. Because girls, girls don't mess around. I mean, I've never gotten to the point where like, I'd find someone on the NFL team. Honestly, can you send me a message? I want to see <laughs> what wanna player. See. I want to see what team. Can you get anonymous? A- we'll keep it secret. Uh, we'll send you an NDA. I promise. <laughs> like it will be all confidential. Put me and Demps in a group <laughs> chat on Instagram and homegirl. We want to know his name. We want to know. I want to wear. I, I want to rock a jersey. We I want to. S- we Can saw- we get tickets? <laughs> That's all I care about. Can I get? I've never been to an NFL game, so I would love to go. We're going to a Titans game. Oh, cheers. Cheer. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally not kidding. I'm Can you make- believe that? I've never been to an actual NFL game. We're going. I just want to, I just want to find a boyfriend or a okay, well, I got to, now I, I got to slide into some Titans players DMs. I got to. I'm now on a life mission for us to go to the Titans. I could buy a ticket. I support that though. I support I her I support. Though. I support. Wow. Well, cheers to secrets. You guys are. A lot of cheaters out there in the world, which kind of makes me sad. But like, uh, yeah, I was look, actually really surprised on some of those. I, like, I mean, oh. some people on these have admitted and I hate saying this because I'm going to get in trouble with like the FBI. They've admitted murder to me. And I'm like, do not. I don't want to be loop. Look, the FBI is watching they're, they They can trace. I'm like, do not. admit. Do you have an Alexa in here? No. OK. Thank God. No, I know because the FBI would be listening. But no, people have been like, yeah, my. My mom murdered someone and I witnessed and no one ever found out. I'm like, do not tell me this. I don't want to be a witness. I don't want to go to jail. Stop it. Um, people be crazy on the Internet. And this but- is why I don't open up my DM. <laughs> <laughs> You're smart woman. Smart. <laughs> I do open up my DMs. I don't want people to think like I like I skimmed. But there's, there's just a lot Dems, to you unpack. A, there. You have a whole ass kid. <laughs> you don't need excuses. There's a lot to unpack there at home when I get my kid home and I'm done making content or whatever I'm done doing that day. I just like to turn it off. Smart. So. Boundaries. Cheers to boundaries. Yes. Amen thank you that. so much for having yes, me, Yes, well, thank you. Thank you, Demps. For anyone who doesn't already follow you, where can they find you? Tell me about the <laughs> podcast, all the things that you're doing right now. i just been saying, Google me, bitch. But um, yeah, TikTok. Um, I actually have a nice following on Spotify. I have a killer playlist. Yeah, I was verified one day. I was like, how the 
fuck am I verified on Spotify? Okay. Uh, yeah, Spotify, because, you know, I do promote music here in Nashville. You guys can find me on Spotify, Katie Dempsey, Instagram, and just damps. Just type in damps. Just, just type in damps. <laughs> Did you just I want an anywhere? accent again. I'm going to start talking with I the southern accent. I think it got fucking worse over the fucking damps. years. <laughs> when I moved back home, I think it got fucking worse over well, the years. Cheers to you. I love you. Can't wait to go to our first Titans game together. Yes. Cheers. Cheers, Dawn. Yay! <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to the Your Internet Best Friend podcast. It's been real, it's been fun, and I will see everyone here next week. In the meantime, do all the podcast things like, subscribe, give me a five star review if you please, and catch up with me on social media at Morgan Lee Willette. Bye, besties. <laughs>